Okay, see you later. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Loud Spot. I'm your host, Sebastian. Out of Oklahoma City, we got Brian Carter from the band Scream at the Sky. What's up, dude? What's up, dude? What's up, man? <laughs> it's, you know, it's, as Sam's watching, Sam says he is here watching the show. Dude, it, you know what? How long ago was that concert that you played with Pigweed? Uh, uh, a month ago? Yeah, about a month ago, man. And that's when I met you, dude. And I'll tell you, you were playing the bass for them, and mm-hmm. the stage presence was fucking phenomenal, dude. Phenomenal yeah. stage presence. How We're going to talk about Scream at the Sky, but I do got to ask you, how, let me take my camera. Hopefully it doesn't freeze on me here. There we go. How long does it take you to learn a whole entire set? Because how did that happen? So you toured with Pigweed kind of last minute notice, right? Yeah, so... The guys in Pigweed had a guy that had some stuff that needed to be taken care of. And uh, Dave, I had seen Dave on the road because uh, I was screaming at the sky being out on the road and all that. Mm-hmm. And I've seen Pigweed and them. And I told Dave, I said, hey, man, you know, I'm a pro musician. And if you ever need a dude to learn some tunes or something and, you know, you're getting a bad bind, you know, I'm, let's help, I'll help you out as much as I can. So I got that text from Dave one day and he said, hey, man, uh, we got a tour booked and we got we need a little help. And I was like all right, send me the tunes. So I learned the tunes. And then like, I guess a week later, a couple days later, I was in San Antonio. And then I went on tour with them for a week. Dude, that's crazy. So you didn't even really know the band all that well. Uh, I bet you got to know them pretty well on the road. Well, I mean, I did know the guys pretty well, just like passing through. I mean, you you tour a lot and you meet the guys you play. We played shows with them in in Houston and San Antonio and stuff like that. But um, you do get to know a person very well when you're on the road, when you're standing next to a dude, you're, you're smelling, you know, what they <laughs> smell like you're coughing and breathing the air. They, they breathe, you smell their dirty feet. You, you eat the same food they eat. I mean, it's, it, you, you become real close and all them dudes in pigweed are super rad, uh, very yeah. professional guys, man. Super, super good guys, man. I, I, I had no problems out in on them. They were super rad. That's cool, man. That, that is, it's just crazy how you can just learn something, do it. And then the show you guys put on was was absolutely fantastic. And it was a fun night. I mean, I was super hammered. I got in the mosh pit. Dude, I, and it was, I did not feel great the next day, I'll tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> Let's yeah. talk about Scream at the Sky. All right. Yeah. This, now, this is the band that you sing in. Yes, yes. I front man Scream at the Sky. Um, I front manned as a guitar player and front man now as a bass player for Scream at the Sky. Okay, how many people are in Scream at the Sky? Well, at any given time, there's at least two. <laughs> but at, 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 at most times, we like to keep, you know, the, the four-piece rolling for us. But we have done tours as a three-piece also. Okay, now when did Scream at the Sky start? Well, I I created Scream at the Sky in 2018. And I was working and driving for bands across the U.S. and Canada. And I stuck stickers across the whole nation. And uh, and every venue that I went into, professional, pub, bar, if I traveled there, walked there, I put stickers everywhere. And then in tw- February of 2020, I played my first show as Scream at the Sky. Okay, okay. You know, you know what? You put stickers everywhere. Well, you know what Sam does for me? Because Sam, you know, is all around the country driving. He, the best place to put them is in toilet stalls. We, <laughs> we have thousands of pictures of people that have sent me a, a toilet stall with piss in it that has a scream at the sky sticker in it guaranteed so how how did the band how did the band start i, I guess did you start the band are you the originator of scream out the sky which is a super cool name by the way yeah well i i um you know i played for a band called dead horse drama for about six years, uh, five to six years. Um, and I traveled all over us, Canada and Europe with them. And then, um, we took a little hiatus. Um, uh, Eric and the guys, I have, uh, he has some stuff he needs to take care of and stuff like that. And uh-huh. I, uh, I, uh, then for, like I said, in 2018, that's when I was like, well, fuck, I need to go find, uh, like, this, I don't want to slow down. I want to go faster. I want to go yeah. harder. Like I want to fucking, this is what I do. I like, I like, I want to stay on the road. So I, so I said, I went and worked for bands and then I, I created scream at the sky while I was on the road. I just wrote music. Uh, I had like, I met people like, uh, my video dude, Eric, he's a guitar player for one of the bands, Grendel and his own band adoration destroyed. 
And he helped me make my first Scream at the Sky video, which is an acoustic video. And we shot it all over the U.S. in different places. And so I, that's where my vision. And I, I created the band for like positivity and positive influence um, because I just got tired of all the like bad stuff and negative all around me. You're always going to have it. But I was like, fuck it, man. I want to write music for to just be positive and and write music about smoking weed and <laughs> being positive and shit, man, to be honest. So then scream at this guy real quick. Sam says, <laughs> Sam, Sam says, he has a big mouth. LOL. He also, shut up about the stickers thing. That's so funny. So scream at this guy, I guess, was a solo project. I right? It was, and when you say there's anywhere from two to four members at any given time, is it because band members kind of come in and then they can't tour? So you kind of can't use them. Like expl- explain anywhere between two to four members. Well, I, uh, I treat my band like a business and at any given time, like anybody's replaceable. Like you, people make mistakes. People will have problems. Um, people are just like, Hey, I want to help you along until you get to this point. And then you're, uh, this is what you're going to do. And basically I took scream at the sky from being a vision to a mm-hmm. complete touring band in less than a year. And now we've been all over the U S last year. And, um, so We've had some hired members. We've had great friends that were just filling guys that play for other professional touring bands. And um, they were just like, hey, I got a uh, I got this other stuff going on. This is my main thing. I'm going to help you out as much as possible. And that's how I started it. And then, um, you know, people get put in jail. People like there are lots of reasons like people have jobs. If you're in a band, don't go to jail. Try not to go to jail. Yeah. If you go to jail, first of all, you can't tour. And second of all, like a lot of people that go to jail want to be on probation and they can't even leave like their hometown or whatever for a certain period of time. Yeah, Yeah, man. I mean, anything's possible with like this world. So like I just told myself, I want to create a machine that doesn't stop. So um, I've had some hired hands and then I have Dave, my drummer, who's been my my drummer uh, some uh, in, in with me now. And now I got a pretty good, another solid lineup. It's not that I don't want to, like, I'd love to have five core dudes that created a band and stuck together from the day one. and was like, yeah. fuck yeah, this is well, like, it's just not the realistic world anymore. But like, <laughs> I, the older, the older we get, the harder it is, I would probably assume to get a band. Cause like we were talking before we went live, you know, you guys are doing a concert here in Oklahoma city, 4th of July. And I'm like, I, maybe I could go. I don't know. I got family, kids. And so I, that probably all interferes um, with bands. I'm surprised that Pigweed can travel because all those guys, you know, a lot of them have families and, and marriages. It's tough, hey, man. We're the same same way, brother. We mm-hmm. we've we all we all have kids. We all been married. I mean, it's all about how bad you want it, how much of a hustler you are. You got to come home, bust ass, make as much money as you can. Um, <laughs> a right. good a good friend of mine that uh that i still live by to this motto to this day and it's a, a big steve from the band skin lab and he told me one day out back of a of my local club here i seen him and i said i said i just want to do this for the rest of my life steve and you know all this stuff and he goes you know what brian real rock stars have day jobs and <laughs> i've lived i've lived by that motto to this day so i come home bust ass mechanics same thing with the dudes in pig they go home bust ass make as much money as they can hit the road again so what's the writing process, I guess, for Scream at the Sky? Is it pretty much you and the guitar, and then you implement other people that are going to go on tour with you to learn the songs? Um, so I create and write most and almost all of the music for Scream at the Sky, all the way down to drums, bass, guitar, samples. Sometimes it's just a pure simple noise or a beat that makes it. Um, I create songs, and then I give them to my guys, and then they put their creative twist on them. Um, if there's like a member that's there, but most of the stuff is r- written by me. And then d- I-, I give it the drum parts over to Dave, the drummer. And he, he does, he, most of it's like some of it's on the key. When I write mm-hmm. music, I kind of write for the people that I play with. Mm-hmm. Um, like I can't, you know, be putting some crazy ass blast beats playing, you know, something that somebody can't play or a shredding solo that somebody can't play. So I just write what I, what it's pretty simple, more for having a high energy stage show also with it but still having catchy riffs and, and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, simpli- song, simplicity, man. Your song that we're going to play here in just a little bit is, is really awesome. I do want to talk about how we got you on the show though. So, sure. so how Brian got on the show is he was playing at a, Oh, hell, what's in that venue? Uh, 
in Oklahoma blue City. Note. The blue, blue note. note. Yeah, the blue note. So you guys got the blue note. And, you know, you're filling in, uh, the filling bass player. And at, by the time you come up to me, start talking, towards the end of the night, we're pretty hammered. And I was like, I'm going to get you on the show. Let's get you on the show. And uh, I was asking about your band. And I booked it that night yep. when I was drinking, right, over yep. a month ago. Yeah. And I yep. did not, and I did not flake. And you are here tonight. I'm, I'm here. I'm here. Yeah, you. T- I was told you were all booked up, man. So I, that's why when I seen you in person, I said, "Here I am. Let's let's make this date, bud. Let's I, figure what. Let's figure out what we can do." And you said, "Let me whip this calendar out real quick." And you said, "Boom." Google, and then all of a sudden, in my phone, it said Google, and then there we were, and here we are now, but we're we're Googled, Googled up. And what's so funny is, like, when I first met you, I thought you were, like, a real quiet dude, but then as the night kind of went on, you became more and more talkative, and I was like, this guy's fucking cool, man. Let's get him on the show. Plus, your band's good, and your stage presence is, like, it's like one of those things. Someone has good stage presence, you know they got a lot of energy, I feel, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, stage presence is everything. Is that something that you look for uh, when you're getting somebody to do a show with you? Oh, uh, man. Do, do you want, like, do you require them to have stage? Like, what if they're really good, but they fucking suck, and they just stand there on stage uh, and don't move? Has that ever happened? It's absolutely happens quite a few times, dude. Sometimes, like, you know, sometimes you get a great one. Sometimes you get one that's just like a stand there silently. Like me personally, like I look for like raw talent and guys, but you know, you don't always get that. I've even uh, took in the approach of like getting um, younger guys or hungry, uh, hungry dude. That's maybe not as badass as a musician, um, but you can teach them well. they learn real well and that you can, um, you can break them in some, you know, I've, I've, I've tried all this different aspects about trying to find a musician, but I definitely prefer uh, you know, my right hand and, and left hand guy to just be destroying as hard as I can. Cause yeah, and, 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 and scream at the sky. I'm, I'm stuck uh, behind a mic, but I rock it as hard as I, I can in that one spot and all over. And when I don't have to sing, I'm going nuts. And uh, currently my dudes in scream at the sky do the same thing. They, they throw down hard. And I, I learned that aspect from like playing with dead horse trauma because I was like pushed to the limit with them guys. I was, I'd be standing there with, you know, my boy Seth on the, on the left and Jason and they're just going hard as a shit. And I'm like, uh, I can't just be here just sucking, dude. I gotta go. I gotta go just as hard, if not harder. And then like, you know, it just like became like, who can go the hardest tonight? And it was, it, you got it, to, you got yeah. to nothing, nothing worse than seeing a really good band that is boring on stage. And Ronald, uh, uh, Sharon says zombie shit. She, Sharon, we, we love Sharon. She's always on the show, but uh, Ronald Buckley says, my boy blue. I'm assuming that's for you. Cause you got the blue hair. <laughs> I got yeah. nothing blue on me. So I'm assuming that's, I'm assuming that's for you. All right. Hell the, song, yeah. the music video we're going to play tonight is is it sa- save your what's it called save yourself save yourself okay i was almost at save yourself but i was like maybe it's not save yourself because i i screen recorded it and then uh and then I, anyways let's play save yourself right now when did you guys come out with this song about 10 months ago less than uh, a year ago yeah about less than a year ago like i said february 2020 we, we released this ep and we've been out uh, like i said on the road ever since like we just never looked back we hit the roads so it's february <laughs> Are you drinking a beer? No, sweet tea and blunts. Oh, okay. Well, that's good. That's, that's good. Okay, when when the song come out? When when it come out? When the video come out? Uh, February. Well, oh no, this video came out in October of twenty twenty, if I'm not okay. mistaken. Yeah, yeah. So almost not quite a year yet. Let's jam the. 